Hello everyone, welcome back to Relative Security and today we are going to complete our incident response series at least the phases that we have discussed uh, will be completed for example preparation, identification and analysis and containment we have already discussed today we are going to talk about eradication, um, recovery and the lessons learned. I hope this series and the other videos on this channel have been very beneficial to you and if they have added any value to your education or to your skills please don't forget to subscribe this channel like the videos and leave a comment it could be a feedback it could be a negative or positive feedback but we would love to hear from you so let's further dive into the eradication in this phase, we are going to talk about identifying the hosts, where in this we are talking about the affected hosts, removing the artifacts, the malicious artifacts that the malware attack or the incident has left on the devices in your network, updating the configurations, applying patches and documentation. So this phase is all about removal and restoration of systems affected by security incident. When we talk about removal, that means eliminate all the malicious content from the affected systems and ensure that these affected systems are no longer are no longer part of the systems which have malicious content still on them. These systems need to be thoroughly cleaned because um, these systems need to be thoroughly cleaned. This thoroughly cleansing may involve complete re-imaging of the system's hard drives, wiping them clean and reinstalling the operating system and the applications to ensure that not a single artifact or a trace of any malicious content is left behind on those systems. Because remember, after eradication, you are putting these machines back into the production and we do not want to have the incident resurface when your systems are in the production at some time. The goal is to return the systems to a known good state free from any compromise or unauthorized content. That's why the emphasis is on meticulous cleanup and restoration procedures to eliminate lingering threats and vulnerabilities, ultimately restoring the integrity and security of the affected systems. The updating of the configurations is very critical. Depending on the attack vector that was used by the attacker in that particular incident. But in any case, your firewalls, your applications, your operating systems, everything needs right configurations. It is important that your configurations are accurate and closely aligned with the best practices that you may have. Following an incident, it is very crucial to enhance the defenses based on insights gained from understanding its cause. Because when you are analyzing the incident, you will understand that what were the vulnerabilities that were exploited or what were the attack vectors that were employed to move within the organization. So once you have that idea that what are the different weaknesses that were exploited only then you can start um, remedying the situation. So the next point in the eradication is installing patches and fixing those vulnerabilities identified during the incident response process. Additionally, using original disk images helps restore systems to a known good state. Again, eradication phase is all about eliminating any artifacts or components of the incident such as removing malwares, 
disabling breach user accounts. This phase will also involve identifying and mitigating all vulnerabilities exploited during the incident. So that's all about eradication. And last step is documentation. Every step that you take, all the systems, the way you have identified the hosts, what were those hosts that you identified should be documented. What happened to those hosts that were identified? Were they isolated? Did you run any commands on them? How did you remove those malicious artifacts? All this should be part of your documentation, which will become ultimately the final incident response report. This all these the, the reason that we are emphasizing on the documentation is that during the incident response, no doubt there are a lot of other activities that you're doing, but the documentations will help you when you are preparing your incident uh, response report. The next is the recovery. Here, the primary goal overall is to prevent any other incident from happening that was due to the same problem that caused the one that was just resolved. In recovery, administrators restore systems to normal operations and confirm that the systems are functioning normally. And if applicable, remediate vulnerabilities to prevent similar incidents. Recovery may involve actions such as restoring systems from clean backups, rebuilding systems from scratch, replacing compromised files with clean versions, clean, clean versions, installing patches, changing passwords, tightening network parameter security. In basically in the incident response recovery phase, during the restoration, focus is on restoring affected systems and services to their normal functioning state after an incident. This involves repairing or rebuilding compromised infrastructure. When we talk about the normal operations, it is to ensure the organization runs to regular business operations without any disruptions. This will include validating the critical systems and services which are operational and accessible. There are series of recovery activities such as applying patches, restoring data form backups and implementing, which will all be done during this recovery um, uh, phase because the, we have to achieve the ultimate goal of putting everything back in production as it was before the incident. And lastly, again, we need to make sure that our documentation is top-notch and everything is being recorded the way it should be because this all is going to help you when you will be writing your own report. Let's talk about the lessons learned during an incident response. The first thing that you do once your systems are back in uh, operations, everything is clean, there is no chance, or at least you have done your best that this same incident will not occur again. Now, in this particular phase, in the lessons learned phase, you will have a meeting. You will plan a meeting where all the relative stakeholders, relevant stakeholders will be invited to discuss. What will you be discussing? It would be five W's and one H. Five W's is what happened, why it happened, when it happened, where it happened, and who did it, or who was involved whose system was involved, these kind of things that will be answered. What happened will be identified or will be discussed because all the stakeholders may not be uh, aware of the current situation or they do not even know the intricacies of the incident. So this will be discussed that a particular subset of the network was compromised and then how and what was done to, as a response to that incident. It will also be checked. The response that was done for a particular incident, was it closely aligned to what was planned? How much deviation was from there? 
and why was there deviation? These kind of things will become part of your incident response report as well. These will be in the uh, recommendation section of your report that these were the weaknesses that were identified during the incident response and this should not happen. So we need to improve our processes or policies, whatever you want to update or wherever you have um, created your incident response plans or strategy. Main purpose is for the lessons learned that all the discussion should involve or should revolve around one single point that how can we improve our detection capabilities, prevention capabilities, and most of all, response, incident response capabilities to ensure that incidents to incidents do not occur. If they occur, how soon and how effectively can we respond back to such incidents? And once this meeting is concluded, and before the conclusion of this meeting, all of the stakeholders need to understand that what was the scope of this incident? How big was it? How was it contained and eradicated? And where are the, which we discussed before, where are the areas of improvement? What are the recommendations that we need to involve, that we need to put in our incident response report as well? Because once you have that incident response report with recommendation, the next phase would be to work on it to improve the security posture of your organization. I hope this was helpful for your uh, knowledge. If there are any questions or queries, please don't forget to like. Uh, please don't forget to share your uh, queries in the comment section and like and subscribe our channel and videos. Thank you so much.